interest in our uh, in our uh, tractor and stuff that we use it for around here on the homestead and I've been getting some questions about why we chose Kubota for one thing and why we chose an L series and why we chose a manual transmission over a hydrostatic and uh, I thought I'd make a video about some of that stuff but I'll explain to you why we chose the tractor that we chose this really is not to try to influence your choice one way or another as to what you should buy. I'm not here to make a, a commercial for the Kubota L2501 tractor. You may decide you want something smaller, bigger, different brand. For the most part, they're all good. You could do a lot worse than Kubota. They are expensive, but we bought this one because of our past history with Kubota. This wasn't our first tractor. So uh, that being said, Let's take a look at it. This isn't our first tractor. We started out quite a while ago. We bought a used Kubota. I believe it was a 1984 L235. It was a four wheel drive, uh, 23 and a half horsepower, but it was 35 years old. We had it for a very long time. It was a very simple machine. I didn't do any research when I bought that one. I bought it because it was a Kubota tractor and I wanted a small four wheel drive machine to help do firewood and snow removal and stuff like that around the house. This is when we lived in our old home in town. And we kept that machine for a few years here. And as time went by and me getting older, I started thinking about the possibility of retirement and how nice it would be to have a tractor and have it all paid for by the time I got ready to retire without making a tractor payment. So the interest rates were low and we decided to start looking around. Now, I looked at all different manufacturers, and I, like I said, I am biased with Kubota. I'm not going to lie, because we had a 35-year-old Kubota that was still doing the job. It's pretty hard to beat a track record like that. They tried to uh, steer me in the direction of a hydrostatic. A hydrostatic doesn't have a clutch. A hydrostatic has... Uh, Basically, it's like an automatic transmission in a car. You have a lever or a pedal that pushes you forward. You push it forward, you go forward. You push it backward, you go backward. And you have three ranges of speed, high, low, and middle. Uh, this tractor isn't like that. This tractor actually has a clutch. It's gear driven instead of being hydraulically get driven like a hydrostatic. And one thing you'll notice about this, being an L-Series tractor, it's kind of Kubota's economy tractor, and there's not a lot of plastic on the machine. Things are metal. There's no fancy plastic floorboards with floor mats. Everything is steel, very no frills. The controls are all very simple. They're metal rods with knobs on them. It's very utilitarian. It's not fancy. This is the way I like it. It's a tractor, it's made to work. You know, uh, I have nothing against the other ones. They may be great if you've got a small lot or something you're working on, you can buy a, you know, roughly the same size tractor, so like a 20, 24 horse tractor maybe. It was a B series or a BX. And it's not gonna be much bigger than a large riding lawnmower. And you can get it with a bucket and a backhoe and a snow blower. you can get cabs for them, you can get anything you want. but. Our tractor maintains our private road. 
So we need a big machine because we have to move a lot of snow at a time to keep the road open. Um, I needed the heavy weight of the L series tractor because it's more of a full size machine to be able to push the extra snow and to be able to lift the extra snow. Plus this machine actually comes with a five foot bucket instead of a four. So it's actually, you know, it's gonna move more in the bucket as well as being able to push more. And I think all your major manufacturers offer a gear drive tractor. I could be wrong, but I think most of them offer it. They may not stock them, but they offer them. And uh, the 2501 gear drive tractor essentially was the same tractor that we had in the old 1984 L2350. The tractor is almost the same. Um, it's, it's got power steering. The old one didn't have power steering, which is very nice. Uh, it's also got the quick connect skid steer type connections on the uh, buckets. So you can switch from a bucket to a snow push pusher to a set of pallet forks to uh, all a baler or anything else like that. You can switch to that fairly easily. Um, in just a couple seconds, actually, we get some video of that. You'll be able to check out and that was an option You can get them that don't have that it'll save you a lot of money But a it's really expensive to switch to it later on So if you think you want the quick disconnect you really want to get it when you buy the tractor new That's just my opinion Now this tractor isn't clean. We use it. It's not a It doesn't get kept in a garage. You'll see this grease all over it where it's been greased and, uh, we've had it it'll be I think two years this spring I believe we had this tractor and it's just turned a hundred hours so it's uh, in another 50 hours it's gonna be ready for its first big service I've already changed the oil in it and the uh, the filters for the hydraulic and for the oil once at 50 hours and the next the next service uh, is at 150 but one of the reasons I went with this gear drive tractor instead of a hydrostatic unit is because of the ease of maintenance. I've been a mechanic in one form or another or involved in that trade my whole life. If something goes wrong with this tractor and the clutch goes bad, I can come up with the blocking and I have the tools where if I can buy the parts, I can change that clutch myself. If something goes wrong with the hydrostatic drive tractors, I can't fix that. It may only be a 30 cent O-ring or a gasket or a seal somewhere or a little valve or a spring, but it could cost $3,000 to get that fixed in a shop because they have to tear the machine completely apart to do it. There really isn't a lot to go wrong with a gear drive tractor with a clutch, except the clutch. So they're very utilitarian in that respect. Everybody asked me why I didn't go with a bigger machine. I already had a machine that was this size. Why didn't you get the, the 3301 or the 3901? Well, to start with, they're all the same machine. They're the exact same machine except for very few things. They have uh, more horsepower at the PTO. That is for sure. There's no doubt about that. The machines are basically the same weight. Um, you can get gear drives in all three of those machines, but they have the same loader. They have the exact same loader, the exact same bucket, the exact same hydraulic pump. It's the exact same machine. If you cover up the sticker that says 2501 and park it beside of a 3901, you literally can't tell them apart looking at them. One big difference is the 39 and the 3301s are both tier four diesels which means they require a regeneration process because the new EPA regulations want to cut down on the emissions now that regeneration process requires some onboard computer stuff in your tractor that tells you when it needs to regen how long it needs to regen when it stops all that stuff I've been involved with enough heavy equipment where I work that does regens that I, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't like it. It ends up being a hassle. Eventually it ends up not working the way it's supposed to work. You can't fix it yourself. A technician has to come to your house 
with a uh, laptop or an iPad to change settings and mess around with things. And if, if they get a check engine light, just like a car does, like a new car does. And I think it's uh, three times if that light comes on, the machine will go into something they call limp mode. And it cuts the horsepower right back, way back and goes into what they call D-rate. And you can't really do a lot with it. And at that point, you either need to flatbed it to the dealer or pay the dealer to come out and work on it. Now, that only applies to tractors that are over 26 horse. This 2501 is a 25 horsepower tractor. So it can stay tier three diesel. So it's basically the same machine that Kubota has been making for the last 20, 30 years. And it doesn't have any of the onboard computing stuff. Now, if I use the PTO, the power takeoff in the back, to drive a rototiller or uh, some big, you know, power equipment, I might have thought about getting a higher horsepower tractor. But really, we don't use that. We have a driveway rake that we put on the back of it, a York rake that we use to maintain our driveway with. Um, Really, that and, you know, hauling firewood is all we use the back end for. Other than that, the front end is used with either the bucket or the snow pusher, depending on whether we're moving material or whether we're moving snow. So, really, the PTO wasn't a consideration. This 2501 actually doesn't have what's called a live PTO. It doesn't have a true live PTO. So, this PTO stops every time you push down on the clutch, which... Some people complain about, but that's pretty much the way that tractors have been ever since the old Ford 8Ns of the 1940s and 1950s. So it's really a non-issue. So anyway, that's why I chose the tractor that, that we ended up buying. It wasn't just because of the price. Um, I did have a lot of extra stuff added on when we bought it. Stuff that I knew from having the old tractor that it would be nice. To have on this one now this uh, this is one of the first things I added over here this is called a saw haul allows me to have a chainsaw on here out of the way all the time it's just a scabbard the saw goes right in it and hangs right there it's out of the way at first I thought it might be a little too far out of the way but it's, it's well inside of the rear tire so uh, I've never had a problem with it even driving in the woods but uh, these are the most important, these nasty chains here. If you look at them, you'll see that it has these studs or picks. These are called diamond ice chains, and that's exactly what they're made for. We have quite a hill here on our driveway, and uh, if we happen to get a storm that's rain instead of snow and the driveway isn't bare, this driveway turns into glare ice. So there have been a lot of times that without these chains... It would have been impossible to maintain this driveway and get vehicles in and out of here. I've had to walk up this driveway before because I couldn't get in with a vehicle. It's not fun. So uh, I spent the money, bought these chains. I think I bought them from a place called tirechain.com. I think they're in Pennsylvania. And they weren't cheap. They were, I want to say around $600 for the pair of them. But they're a worthwhile investment. I don't take them off. A lot of people would take theirs off in the summertime. But this tractor doesn't see any pavement except down when we uh, plow the road. At the very end of the road where we meet with the tire road. That's the only place that's ever on the tire. So, I mean, these have been on here going on two winters now. They're not worn down at all. So, I'm not, I'm not going to take them off. They're kind of a hassle to put on and take off. So once they're on there, they stay. And I also uh, added this quick hitch. This allows you to put three-point hitch stuff on really quickly. You lower your three-point hitch to the right level. I keep my implements on blocks so they sit level. These levers move these latches. So you open those latches up, lower it down, back this big pin underneath the top pin of your implement, lift up. It swings right in and sets in these holes. You throw that level, and that once that lever is back level with us, you'll know that these paws are out here and it can't come off, and you're hooked up. It saves you a lot of time screwing around with a pry bar. Much easier 
much easier. We put this uh, little storage box on here. I think it's made of aluminum. I think I bought it on Amazon. I can't remember the name of the company. It says it right there, if I can read it. Great Day Incorporated. It's an aluminum box. It came totally adjustable. It'll fit any tractor. And it also came as extras with these uh, gun rack that go on the back or a uh, Abby. You could put a shovel in there or anything you want. It's hunting season here right now, so we're outdoors and we do live in the woods. It wouldn't surprise me if a deer came walking through here at any minute. So that's why my old 3030 is there. But as you can see, I got a uh, bolt hook, a branch hook, if you will. I did, uh, I cut a piece of rubber from the mill, just a little bit bigger than the box to keep the snow out of it. And I keep this bungee cord here just to keep that closed, you know, if it's windy or anything out. But this little box is great. I keep my wedge in there, you know, wedges for felling trees. There's a couple of chains in there. Occasionally you might find a beer cooler or something like that. Extra waters, gloves. Bug spray. Bug spray. Anything you might need. It's just, it. you know, tractors, they have a very small toolbox. It's just a little tiny thing. And not a lot fits in there. So this this is kind of like a an auxiliary thing. But uh, none of this stuff is really cheap either. I'm going to warn you about that. Everything for tractors is expensive. It isn't cheap. But, you know, you're talking about a big investment. That's another reason to, to kind of over-research your choices about what you want to buy for a machine. You don't want to get the wrong one and end up going back and losing trade-in value a year later because you're not satisfied. We also had this roof added. That was an add-on that we had done when the machine was brand new. And we had these three extra lights put on. Uh, the roof, mostly because of the snow. A lot of times we have to plow when it's still snowing because we frequently here, I'd say at least two or three times a year, we'll get a snowstorm that requires us to plow more than once just to keep the road open. So once you've got, you know, a foot or 16 inches of snow, whether it's still snowing or not, you really want to think about opening your driveway up. If you're sitting on this machine when it's snowing an inch an hour with no roof, it's not a very fun experience. Um, that's why we went with the roof. The lights, obviously, it has really good lights on it anyway as compared to our old tractor which uh, we've got some footage of that. That'll be an interesting comparison of the two. But these extra lights make a huge difference moving snow at night, huge difference. You can see so much better. And not only that, when you're down near the road and there are vehicles going by, they can see you a lot better too. You know, it's, uh, it's a no brainer. So, I mean, you could always put the lights on afterwards. I just didn't want to screw around. I had them at them right there at the dealership. Uh, I was trying to think what else we had done to it. Oh, yeah, the bucket level indicator. This little rig here, it probably should be standard, but it isn't. This little thing here has this metal rod in it and this little bolt here to adjust it. Now, with the bucket on here, the way this is hooked onto these pins, when you angle... These arms here that actually control your bucket, this goes in and out. So as this goes out, of course, this rod goes down through this little silver plate right here. With the bucket on the machine, instead of the snow pusher, this little bend sits right in this plate. And that's how you know the bucket is level because it's hard to see the bottom of your bucket when you're sitting in the machine. So if you want to have it tipped forward a little bit, you'd have it you know, basically up here. And if you wanted to have it rolled back, you'd have it somewhere down here. It is different for different implements. Like I said, right now, I've put the snow pusher on here so I can show it to you. And that is not adjusted. It's about an inch off. I could loosen this, slide that down, and it would be set up for the snow pusher. But I don't usually screw with it because I can look. The snow pusher is 72 inches wide. The bucket's only, well, it's a foot narrower. It's five feet. So I can look out you know, over the fender of the tractor and see whether the snow pusher is level or not by whether these shoes are sitting on the ground. A 
Those are replaceable. I suppose if you were uh, plowing hot top, like a parking lot or a hot top driveway all the time, those would wear a lot quicker than they do out here in the dirt. I also had them install a block heater. It gets really cold here sometimes. If it's gonna be 30 below zero, I can plug that cord in. That warms up the antifreeze inside the block and makes it like starting a warm engine instead of starting a cold one. Not that this machine starts bad anyway, it doesn't. It starts very easy, most Kubotas do. Uh, Kubota is one of only two brands that I know of that make their whole tractor themselves. Everything on this machine is made by Kubota. Uh, I think the other one is uh, Massey Ferguson that's like that. All your other ones will have uh, part, uh, I think it's KYM, will have part Mahendra, part uh, Yanmar, some Mitsubishi stuff. They're still good tractors. I'm not saying they're not. I am not. I would own one. I just, I was already dealing with Kubota and I had nothing but good luck with them. And it's the same thing with the, the gear drive. Everybody told me I should buy a hydrostatic. Being able to put a clutch in it myself instead of service a hydro, hydrostatic machine if something goes wrong with it was one buying point. Another buying point would have been the fact that uh, you can't take me and show me a 35 year old hydrostatic light tractor. I can show you all kinds of gear drive 35 year old tractors and they're still going just fine. Longevity is important to me. I want it to last. I'm not saying that's what you should have. You know, uh, I'm both my wife and I are very familiar with driving standard vehicles. We're no stranger to clutch pedals. Uh, you know, some people, just the ease of use, they want it They want it to be like they're riding lawn tractor where they, you know, either hit a switch or push a button and it changes directions. That's not the case with this. This is a real tractor. You have your, your transmission over here that selects your gears. One through four, it's a four speed and a neutral. Then you have a shuttle here that one side controls your high range and low range. So you have actually, I believe it's eight speeds forward and four reverse. This controls your forward and reverse. It also controls your high range and low range. This one lever. That lever over there on the other side uh, is your PTO up and down, changes your height of your PTO arms. The orange or yellow lever down there engages and disengages your PTO. You have a uh, differential lock. There's a little pedal on the other side, looks like a bent piece of rod. On the left side, just like in an automobile, is your clutch. Over here on the right side, You've got a foot throttle, so you can run it like a car, and you also have a hand throttle. One other nice thing about these gear drive tractors is I can set this hand throttle at any speed I want, and I don't have to keep holding down on the accelerator to make the tractor go forward. It will just keep going like cruise control. The hydrostatic machines, you actually have to buy something that's extra that's called cruise control to make it do that. Otherwise, you have to hold down on your treadle pedal Treadle pedal, ha, huh. that's a nice word, isn't it? <laughs> to make it go forward or backwards. And not only that, you'll have your dual brakes. These are actually steering brakes too. You can flip this up and then this pedal will only break this tire. This pedal will break that tire on that side. Or you can put that down and they, they both break together at the same time, you know? And this is your parking brake. So you hold your brake down, push that ahead and that locks it. Very simple machine and everything's very rugged. And if you haven't figured it out, like I said, everything is, everything's metal. Everything is metal. This, this lever here takes it in and out of four wheel drive. This is a four wheel drive machine. You can buy this machine a two wheel drive and hey, two wheel drive may be the thing for you if you're not dealing with snow and ice and all you're doing is uh, working on a garden or doing stuff on a flat pasture or something like that, you may not need a four wheel drive tractor. We need four wheel drive here for getting in the woods and getting firewood and obviously for the ice and snow in the driveway. 
I don't know, that's about it. This, these are your bucket controls, side to side controls. If you look, you can see the bucket actually moving a little bit. So I drain the hydraulic out of it. Then up and down. Kubota is also one of the only tractors that makes it easy for you to do two functions at once. You can put it into a corner and it will go either up and roll the bucket or up and roll the bucket forward or down and roll it either way. You can move it two directions at once. A lot of manufacturers, you can either go up and then stop and then dump, but you can't go up and dump at the same time. I don't know exactly what machines have that and what don't. I just know all of them don't. So that might be something you might be interested in too. Now, if you're a homeowner and you've got a nice driveway that's maybe 50 feet, 100 feet long, something like that, and you've got a nice garage and stuff, you're not going to need a big tractor like this. I mean, the horsepower will be the same, but the weight of the machine and the size of the machine can be a lot smaller. And there's a lot of stuff available for those. You can get one that's got the center mount PTO. So you can have a drive shaft that goes out the front. You can take your bucket off and you can put a front mounted snow blower on it so you can blow snow going forwards. With this machine, I can put a snow blower on it, but it has to be on the back because it only has a rear mounted PTO. So any snow blowing that you do would have to be backing up. So that's another, you know, plus or minus, depending on how you look at it. There's a lot to think about when you're buying a light tractor. Um, for a homesteader, I'm going to say right now that if you can afford one, you should buy one. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, I got a UTV or I've got a four wheeler and I do all my stuff for that. You know, it won't do what a tractor will do. But I guarantee you this tractor will do most everything and then some that one of those will do. We just use it for so much. If, if Shelly goes to uh, the store and comes home with four or five bags of feed, instead of carrying them all over to the chicken coop by hand, we fire up the tractor and throw them in the bucket and just haul them over there. You know, we use it as a motorized wheelbarrow. Um, we use it to put wood in the woodshed. You know, we use it to haul wood to the wood splitter. You know, firewood, it, it's getting used for almost everything. Plus, we also use it to take the wood from the woodshed and bring it over to the sliding glass door in the house. And then we get to reach into the bucket and we can have that whole bucket full of wood and bring it in and put it beside the wood stove. And you don't have to run in and out of the house a whole bunch of times. So that's another, another up, you know, another upside for it. There's just so many, you, you, once you have one, you'll wonder how you ever got by without it. <laughs> don't you think? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, like I said, they're expensive. Uh, you know, you're talking, uh, Something like this, I'd say probably between twenty and $25,000, I'm going to guess. But they're usually really good with their financing. You can usually finance them at a very low, if not a 0% financing, if you've got uh, decent credit. They do require you to have insurance on the machine. Uh, Kubota's own insurance, I think it's called KTAC. That's what I have. It was kind of a no-brainer because not only does it cover anything that you uh, might have happened to the machine, if you do something to it, if you drive it out into the woods, run over a big rock, and say you poke a hole in your oil pan and seize your motor up, your KTAC insurance will pay to fix that. Now, I don't think your automobile insurance will pay to fix that if you do it to your automobile. I don't, I'm not sure, but it's in their best interest to, to have you have this machine going at least as long as it takes to pay you off. So you have to have insurance on it for as long as there's a note on it if you're going through Kubota financing. I have found no problems with Kubota's financing whatsoever. I've heard people complain about it. I haven't seen it. They're a little slow to post the uh, payments sometimes, but they've never complained. Uh, I mean, they're like any, any other bill. As long as you pay it, you're not going to have an issue. It's when you can't pay it that you can have an issue. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I'm sure all other manufacturers have equal deals. Uh, John Deere, you know, I, I'm not much of, I love John Deere. I've been around him my whole life. But I'm gonna tell you this, when it comes down to the, the green John Deere tractors instead of the yellow, you know, the homeowners type and farm tractors, they're just not built the same as the Kubota is. So, you know, you look around, you, you do your research, Find out what's best for you. You may want a hydrostatic and a B model. 
you want to you may want a big Kubota MX with a heated air conditioned cab. You know, you I, I don't know. I everybody always says find the tractor you want, then buy two sizes bigger because you can't overbuy. Well, I I don't know. I like this one just the way it is. I'm totally happy, totally satisfied. I don't feel the need to have a big tractor. Our other tractor was about the same size. That one was big enough. I just wished I could roll the clock back on it and make it new again by buying this 2501. That's essentially what I did. And I gained power steering and, and some other options in the process. Okay, one other thing you'll notice is I went with the, uh, the tall, skinny agricultural tires instead of the multi-use, more of a construction tire and wheel that they usually come with. These are called R1s. I believe the ones that are standard are R4s. Those tires are much wider and they're much shorter. Same with the rear, same exact thing with the rear. And also, if you go with the R1 type on the rear, you have the option of being able to change your offset. Make your tires stick out farther or make them stick in farther, either by moving it to the next hole or by actually taking this wheel off and putting it on the other side. So this would be up against the wheel on the inside instead of the out. So it gives you more options for your rear wheelbase. I also had these tires loaded. Uh, there have been many things that they put in them. They load them for uh, counterweight for your bucket so the back end of your machine doesn't come off the ground. You can do that yourself. They sell kits to do it. I had it done right at the dealership. And it's Kubota's product. It's um, They used to put calcium in it, but calcium is very corrosive. So this is some kind of a calcium substitute. They've used beet juice in them before, which sounds funny, but it's true, beet juice. And uh, I've heard people using uh, uh, windshield washer fluid because it doesn't freeze. I don't know about the beet juice freezing. I would think that would at least turn to slush, but I don't know. Mm. This is a, these have uh, Kubota's, I can't remember the name of the product, but it's a, a calcium substitute in the rears. I never bothered putting chains on the front because I thought it would be too hard on the drive line. If you get in a hard spot with your wheels turning and have all, all four tires changed up, chained up, you might break something. <laughs> all right, well. Thanks for stopping by. I hope I didn't bore you too much. Like I said, you can leave your thoughts and comments and questions in the comments below. And as usual, subscribe. We love it when you come back. This is Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid signing off. Bye-bye. Yeah.